Yeah. Akai Professional MPK Mini 2. What's up guys, first video of 2020, it's good to be back. And I can't believe that video was posted two years ago on my YouTube channel when I was just getting started and super enthusiastic about YouTube. Uh, 41,000 views later, that's the most viewed video that I've ever posted on my channel. Uh, and man, I didn't know anything about nothing. Uh, that was probably the fifth video that I uh, filmed and published on my channel and um, I honestly didn't know much about anything really to be completely honest that time I had just got on a DSLR uh, I knew nothing about it uh, I was just pretty much learning on the go uh, watching YouTube videos got me inspired much like everyone who's watching right now I bet you uh, at one point or other you were probably inspired to do videos and if you're doing it now um, I hope uh, my the future of my channel will help you do the same with the things that I review and uh, buy and maybe give you some tips as like uh, what I'm gonna do today with this uh, Akai MPK mini um, MIDI controller um, yeah that, I mean I came in not knowing much at all uh, I I didn't know how to use a DSLR I didn't know how to do video uh, I didn't know how to um, edit or anything I was like everything was on the go and I bought this thing uh, in hopes to make my own music and produce my own music so I don't have to keep finding music that's not copyrighted so I don't get any hit with any copyright infringement but uh, turns out this is actually pretty hard uh, um, learning learning a bunch of things all at the same time is really not the ideal thing to do uh, people go to school for music people go to school for photography people go to school for videography so uh, trying to cram in three things all at the same time wasn't it just wasn't working for me um, but fortunately enough even though I did sadly not know or end up producing any songs or any music for this uh, I turned out learning how to use this for a um, another purpose which is Lightroom so I do use Lightroom pretty often I, I um, you know, from the photography that I've been doing uh, and uh, I have managed to figure out how to use this uh, or recently actually so because this was thing was collecting dust that I can now use this as a controller to uh, edit my my photos a lot faster uh, and you know instead of just sitting there with the mouse um, it kind of made put more fun into it and it's like a lot easier just to get to the controls um, because you you can set these up and reassign these keys and that's what I'm gonna show you today um, if you are like me because I know this is a very popular MIDI controller everyone went out and got it it's very cheap and attainable and if you are just like me and not and you ended up not being able to use it uh, fear not you can reuse this and uh, reassign it to another use which is Lightroom and I'm going to show you that now eventually I'm going to get back into this and actually learn how to produce music but we'll see <laughs> all right let's switch over to the next view all right guys so I have uh, my RX100 Mark III setup above here on top of my Gorilla Pod. Just kind of pointing down this. It's a little janky setup. I don't really have another tripod that goes over, uh, but this is gonna work for right now. So, as I said, the M the the MIDI 2 LR is uh, specifically for Lightroom. I think there's other ones that, that you can use for for, for for Premiere. It's a little different, but this is mainly just for Lightroom. And I found that the um, the keys here or the the knobs is the same amount of number of uh, knobs in uh, most of the the sliders that you find inside Lightroom. So it uh, there's eight here, and you can see that I have uh, each one of the colors that's on there. So what I did was I set up each one of these uh, buttons over here to uh, to set up a different panel inside Lightroom. So I have basic tone, color adjustment saturation, color adjustment hue, color adjustment luminance, and then I have detail for the sharpening and um, softening of uh, that sort, uh, reduce noise, and I have redo and undo, and I have a few other keys here that I haven't quite set up yet that I'm going to set up, uh, I copy and paste settings, and then I have the shadows, highlights, clarity, dehaze, 
blacks, whites, contrast, and exposure. Now, another cool thing here that this has is you can change the, the bank. So you can choose between these right here. So I can have another set of tools I wanted to set up over here, but right now I'm gonna keep it on the bank A, and that's what all these are, and I can switch that to have something else. Uh, another thing too is if you go to project select, it only allows you to choose two. Um, there's only two that you can choose from the project select, so I can go to project one uh, or project two, and that changes the button or the knobs here. So I'll show you that that is. So let's go into Lightroom. Uh, I have this picture from Banff at Peto Lake that uh, one of my favorite pictures uh, that I've taken ever. Uh, I wish I took more, uh, but it started raining, so uh, we were just kind of in a rush of getting over there. So if you notice in the bottom right, there's a little bit of a kind of um, raindrop uh, on top of that. But anyway, now um, you'll notice here I've already installed this. This is actually a pretty easy install. Uh, I'll link below. I'll link below where you can get this. Um, it's you can even just search Google MIDI 2LR and then right away you'll find it. One of the first things you put in there, and it's an immediate download. Uh, you install it to the Adobe uh, Lightroom or Adobe folder, and it'll automatically jump into the uh, or it'll find it. It'll go to where it should be when it finds the Lightroom and it sets it up as um, one of the uh, what's it called the plugins. So let's go ahead and look in here so you'll see that this is the blank uh, setup right now it's connected to Lightroom you see in the greens it's set up over here you can load if you already have preset um, controls uh, and you can save it every time you set up new ones and then you can go into settings and you can see uh, where you want to choose the folder to save everything now so if you see that me pushing the buttons here uh, it has everything at unassigned and there's a there's a sick a, a number that's on there so each one of these actually have an assigned unique number for them uh, let me clear that over here the knobs are what uh, oh, the knobs are let me actually change back to program one uh, as I was saying so the one two three four five six seven eight the weird part uh, I haven't quite figured this out yet but if I go pro uh, project select uh, or program select whatever that is and I go to the second panel now this changes to 20, 21, 22, 23, 24, 25, 26, 27. Now that's that number. And the same thing for this 49, 55, 51, and you and so on. If you go back to panel one, then you have another set of numbers. So, and the same thing goes for all these. So you can set these up to however you want. Uh, I set it up here. Let me go ahead and load the first one. I use basic tone as my first uh, number here. So whenever I click basic tone, it takes me to this panel. So I set up profiles and I put a profile for every single one of these things. So one profile is, basic, uh, profile one is basic tone, profile two is uh, the saturation, Co profile three is the hue, profile four is a color adjustment, and profile five is the detail. Now I set up this exactly the same in every panel that I have. So if I go into the next panel, you see the profiles are here, but the buttons have changed for what I've set up for each one of those panels. So you'll see that now these knobs are now uh, for the hue, uh, luminance, uh, and then detail. I have those set up for a few keys. But again, I don't have everything completely set up. I just got this and this is kind of my the, the uh, buttons I use the most often. Um, so let's go ahead and go here. Let me move this down, re reduce it, and um, let's go into the basic tone. So uh, you see the position are all kind of off. Once you go into that uh, and use that, that knob, it has to find out where it is. So you can put it all the way back to zero, and then it kind of, uh, you get used to this. It doesn't, because it just needs to know where it starts and goes off. But as you're moving it, it goes into minus or plus, uh, where you want the shadow. So I'm lifting my shadows. Uh, let me drop the highlights down. I'm going to boost up that clarity so you can see a lot more. Uh, let's get uh, this dehaze. Yeah, so you see the clouds. Oh man, that looks good. And then let's bring the shadows back up. I don't want too much shadows because it looks fake. Change the clarity down. Uh, let's make the blacks a little darker. Let's do that right now. Darker. And then just bring that whites down. There, a little more contrast, exposure. Now, if I want to go with the saturation, I think those greens to me are a little bit too much. 
So I'm gonna go into the green right here, and let's uh, let's drop those a little bit and desaturate the green. And of course, the yellow is part of that, so we're gonna desaturate that a little bit too. So if I take them all out, you'll see that now it looks like it's a super moody picture. Um, let's put the greens back up. I took the yellows out of that, and then you'll see how you can completely change it. it makes it so much easier for me. If I pick the exposure up, you see how it just kind of goes. Uh, Nope, that not exposure. Go basic tone, and let's move that exposure all the way up. See, it takes a little time for it to actually catch up when you're when the positions are off, but uh, it'll get there, and then you just kind of remember where you're at. It just it just makes it so much easier. So I don't have to like keep clicking my mouse and finding it. I just have all the keys all set up over here. Uh, let's go into detail and sharpen this up a little bit, and. Detail, smooth that just a little bit, and then we'll go back to saturation. Bring that yellows back because I was just messing with that. Uh, the blue, keep the aqua, make that look a little more blue in the back. And there you go. So you see how I can change the picture. I if I go back to the original to uh, the. the, the Change, original, change, original, change. Now I have, I'm using my keyboard to toggle this uh, uh, back and forth because I haven't had quite figured out where that is um, for that particular button. So let's let me go to another pad here. This one's unused, unassigned, and I couldn't quite figure out what that is. So if you go into to the uh, to develop, it should, you have a show develop and then uh, where is it? Actually, here you go. Primary display before. Um, so I think I have to set up this and this uh, versus the keyboard you only have that backslash uh, button that you can actually set up to uh, toggle untoggle and then you know I wish you, there was a way to do that because you see that this actually has a uh, other buttons that if you press it twice it goes back and forth let's go back to develop here and you'll see that uh, you have left and right if you hit that twice it goes back and forth uh, same thing with more and less if you have that and you just hit it twice it goes it switches back and toggles between those two i wish they did that with this uh primary display before if you hit this one it does the left and right comparison the top and bottom comparison same thing with the, these two but it doesn't show uh the display of that so um of the you know, toggling back and forth before you know the changes but once i figured it out you know i'll put some more update in this, this description but uh this makes it so much easier for me to just launch Lightroom, go in there and hit, go into the toggles. Uh, usually, you know, you can set up presets, but then of course you always have different scenarios of pictures. Uh, you as a photographer should always, I mean, you start knowing how your pictures come out and um, you know how to, you know, what you're going to be like, how your mood is going to be and how you're going to set the colors, the color scheme. But this is a good way to uh, just kind of bypass having to click over there with your mouse. It, it It's different because I like tactile feeling of how like, you, know, you get that feedback and that you're actually doing something. So when you're in here and you're moving uh, the, these toggles around, you can kind of do all of these together. Let me go back into the basic tone. And you can start setting up and start messing around with a bunch of these things and you just go like ham on this and then it's so much faster. You can see the complete difference between the original and the um, the developed. All right, guys, that wraps it up. Thank you so much for watching. Uh, this is the opening video for 2020. Uh, glad to be back on YouTube. And that's my little tidbit on this uh, MPK Mini uh, reuse or reassignment of this MIDI controller to uh, help with your workflow on Lightroom. Uh, that's my little hack myself that I like using. Uh, eventually, I'm gonna get into this and learn how to produce music, but uh, I you know, I felt it was kind of just collecting dust and now I utilize it and use it a lot more because of uh, photography. You see how easy it was to uh, adjust my picture and develop that. So if you like what you saw, guys, go ahead and hit that thumbs up. Uh, leave me a comment. Tell me what you think about that. Uh, do you have any particular layouts? I know there's another uh, MIDI controller that's used pretty often and they have a, a, a uh, if you ha if you don't have one already but I know this is a pretty popular MIDI controller and if you haven't used it for 
uh, music production and you do use Lightroom, I can share the doubt of the the settings that I have currently. Um, if you know, eventually I'm going to set that up where it's going to be more fine-tuned. Uh, right now, I'm not really an expert in Lightroom, to be completely honest. So it's all basic uh, functions. I'm not a super power user or anything like that. But if you want that, you can have the download. Just leave a comment, let me know, and I'll set up a link and I give you guys all the saves and downloads and show you how to set it up. Uh, otherwise, uh, thank you guys for watching. If you like my channel uh, and you want to see more, uh, give this channel a, a little follow, hit the subscription. Um, helps out a lot. Thank you guys for watching and catch you guys in the next one. Peace.